What I hear from those workers lucky enough to survive is that wherever they were working, they were fine one minute and unconscious the next. The human body is like a sponge, a sponge for gases. And it doesn't matter how big or strong you are. And in many accidents, when a passerby has the presence of mind to phone for help, it's usually too late. So planning on being rescued is obviously not the solution. What can be done to prevent these accidents and injuries? Well, it's really quite simple. You develop a standard set of procedures which you follow, and you provide education and training for the workers. Here are the basic principles which you must follow before working in any confined space. The procedures for your particular workplace will be more detailed. Before entering any confined space, ensure that the surrounding area is free from hazards. Test the atmosphere before you enter a confined space. It's essential that you take samples at various levels throughout the space. The first test to conduct is for oxygen. Oxygen deficiency can occur at any level. Some gases, such as hydrogen sulfide, are heavier than air and could settle on the bottom of the confined space. Methane will displace oxygen. It is an explosive gas and is lighter than air. Carbon monoxide has about the same weight as air, so it can be evenly distributed throughout the space. It's an asphyxiant, which prevents your body from absorbing oxygen, causing you to suffocate. Ensure that the tests are taken by a trained worker and the results are recorded in a logbook or on an entry permit. If gas levels are unsafe, you must first ventilate and then retest before entering. If the gas levels are within safe limits, you must still ventilate the space before entering. Never use the ventilator like a vacuum to draw air out of the confined space. It may draw in toxic gases from other parts of the space. The fan must blow fresh air into the space. Ventilation will provide a continuous supply of fresh air and prevent the buildup of contaminants. While workers are in the confined space, ensure that there is a worker on watch who can summon a rescue crew in case of emergency or is capable and equipped to conduct a rescue. Depending on the hazardous nature of the work or type of confined space, more sophisticated equipment and procedures may need to be used. For instance, workers may need to use a harness or lifeline attached to a tripod and wear a continuous gas monitor. There are even situations where a worker may have to wear a self-contained breathing apparatus. In summary, ensure the surrounding area is free of hazards. Test the atmosphere inside the confined space. Ventilate the confined space. And finally, ensure that a man watch has been initiated and emergency procedures have been established. Confined spaces can be found on many work sites, but their hazards may not be obvious. Preparation and testing are your only defenses against this potential killer. The danger is real. But by following established work procedures, most confined space tragedies can be prevented. <laughs>